Hi, and welcome to this video on diffusion and exchange surfaces, content contained within the AQA GCSE Biology specification. The learning objectives for this content are contained within the subtopic Transport in Cells, which is contained within Topic 1, Cell Biology, which is tested in Paper 1. Within the subtopic of Transport in Cells, the areas this video will cover is diffusion. Osmosis and active transport will be covered in separate videos. So. Let's start with the definition. Diffusion is the spreading out of particles from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Diffusion occurs with particles of gas or particles of any substance in solution, as they are able to move around freely and randomly. Whilst the particles move in both directions, there is a net movement from high to low concentration. The particles will end up evenly spread out throughout the liquid or gas, but will continue to move. In cells, the cell membranes control what goes in and out of them. Substances may move into and out of cells across the cell membranes via diffusion. Only small molecules can cross the cell membrane, like oxygen, water, amino acids, and glucose, whereas big molecules, like starch and proteins, are not able to cross the cell membrane. The molecules again move from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. There are three main factors which affect the rate of diffusion across membranes that you need to know about. The concentration gradient is the difference in concentrations between the solutions on either side of the membrane. The higher the difference in the concentrations, the faster the rate of diffusion, as the molecules will go down the concentration gradient faster. The next factor is temperature. The higher the temperature, the faster the rate of diffusion, as the particles have more kinetic energy, so move and mix more quickly. The last factor is the surface area of the membrane. The larger the surface area, the faster the rate of diffusion, as it allows more particles to pass through at the same time. Organisms are required to exchange substances with their environments. Diffusion is used by cells to take in substances that they need and also to remove waste products. For example, oxygen and carbon dioxide are transferred between cells and their environment during gas exchange. As well as this, in humans, urea a waste product which comes from the breakdown of proteins diffuses out of cells into the blood plasma to be taken away to the kidneys for removal from the body. The ability of a cell to exchange substances with its environment is dependent on its surface area to volume ratio. The surface area to volume ratio is the amount of surface area compared to the volume of an object or organism. Let's take a box, 3 cm high, 3 cm wide and 3 cm long and use it as a model for an elephant. Let's also take a box 1cm high, 1cm wide and 1cm long and use it as a model for a mouse. We'll first work out the surface area to volume ratio of the elephant. To work out the total surface area of the elephant, we need to work out the area of each side of the elephant. Each side is 3cm long and 3cm wide, so we'll multiply these together. And as there are 6 sides to a cube, we'll then multiply this by 6 giving us a total surface area of 54 centimetres. The formula for the volume of a block is length times width times height. So in this case, it's three times three times three, which works out to be 27 centimetres cubed. Now, put both these values into a ratio to get the surface area to volume ratio. If we do that, we get 54 to 27. We can simplify this by dividing each side by 27 to get a ratio of two to one. Now, we'll work out the surface area to volume ratio of the mouse. To work out the total surface area of the mouse, we need to work out the area of each side of the mouse. Each side is one centimeter long and one centimeter wide. So we'll multiply these together. And then as there are six sides to a cube, we'll multiply this by six, giving us a total surface area of six centimeters. Again, using the formula for the volume of a block, we get one times one times one, which works out to be one centimeter cubed. Now, Put both these values into a ratio to get the surface area to volume ratio. And if we do that, we get six to one. If we compare the values between the larger elephant and the smaller mouse, we find that the mouse has a larger surface area to volume ratio compared to the elephant, meaning that it has a larger surface area compared to its volume than the elephant. Single-celled organisms have a large surface area to volume ratio, which means enough substances are able to diffuse across its membrane both in and out, to supply the volume of the cell. On the other hand, 
Multicellular organisms have a much smaller surface area to volume ratio, meaning not enough substances can diffuse into them to supply their volume. Due to this fact, multicellular organisms have developed specific exchange surfaces to allow efficient diffusion to enable a sufficient amount of substances to be exchanged to supply their volume. There are four main factors which affect the effectiveness of an exchange surface. The effectiveness of an exchange surface is increased by having a large surface area so that many substances can diffuse at one time, a thin membrane to provide a short diffusion path, and in animals, having an efficient blood supply to enable substances to move into and out of the blood quickly, and ventilation of gas exchange surfaces to bring fresh air and to remove waste products. Now, we'll look at some examples of exchange surfaces in multicellular organisms. In humans, the small intestine is developed for efficient absorption of digested food. The small intestine is covered in millions and millions of finger-like projections called villi, which increase the surface area. The villi have specialized features to allow more efficient diffusion. Each villus is just one cell thick, meaning it has a thin membrane with a short diffusion pathway. A network of capillaries provide a very good blood supply, which allows transportation of glucose and amino acids away from the small intestine in the blood. And an internal structure called a lacteal allows transportation of fatty acids and glycerol away from the small intestine in the lymphatic system. In humans, gas exchange occurs in the lungs. The function of the lungs is to transfer oxygen into the blood and to remove carbon dioxide produced by cells. The blood enters the lungs deoxygenated with a low oxygen concentration, but also a high carbon dioxide concentration as it returns from the body. Carbon dioxide leaves the blood and diffuses into the alveoli and oxygen enters the blood from the alveoli, reoxygenating the blood. The blood leaves the lungs oxygenated with a low carbon dioxide concentration. The gas exchange in the lungs occurs within tiny air sacs called alveoli. The alveoli are specialized in a number of ways for efficient gas exchange. They have a large surface area, a moist lining for dissolving gases, thin walls to provide a short diffusion pathway, and a very good blood supply. In fish, gas exchange occurs in the gills. Oxygen contained within the water enters the fish via its mouth and passes out through the gills. When this occurs, oxygen from the water diffuses into the blood in the gills and carbon dioxide diffuses out into the water. The gills are made up of thin plates known as gill filaments, which enable the gills to have a large surface area for the gas exchange to occur. These filaments are covered in very small structures called lamellae which increase the surface area of the gills even more. When looking at the lamellae in more detail, you can see the rich blood supply that they have, with lots of capillaries. The blood flow is in one direction, and the water flows in the opposite direction. This maintains the largest concentration gradient possible. The lamellae also have a thin surface area to provide a short diffusion pathway. In plants, gas exchange occurs in the plant's leaves. Carbon dioxide diffuses into the leaves through small holes called stomata. This carbon dioxide is used in photosynthesis. Oxygen produced in photosynthesis and water vapour diffuse out through the leaves, through the stomata too. The size of the stomata can be changed by guard cells, which surround the hole. The guard cells are able to close the stomata if the plant is losing water too quickly for the roots to be able to replace it. The leaf also has a flattened shape, which leads to a large surface area. The cells within the leaf also increase the surface area, with the air spaces providing greater surface area around the cells for carbon dioxide to diffuse into the leaves, and oxygen and water vapour to diffuse out. In summary, diffusion is the spreading out of particles from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. The factors which affect the rate of diffusion across membranes are the concentration gradient, or difference in concentrations, the temperature, and the surface area of the membrane. The ability of the cell to exchange substances with its environment is dependent on its surface area to volume ratio. Single-celled organisms have a large surface area to volume ratio, so enough substances are able to diffuse across its membrane, both in and out, to supply the cell, whereas multicellular organisms have a small ratio, so require specific exchange surfaces to allow efficient diffusion. The factors which increase the effectiveness of an exchange surface include a large surface area, a thin membrane, and in animals, an efficient blood supply and ventilation of gas exchange surfaces. The examples of specific exchange surfaces we have covered in this video are the small intestine and lungs in humans, gills in fish, 
and leaves in plants. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more content. Check out some of the tutorials down below.